Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about autism again, but this time I'm going to run through some myths that people have regarding the, um, or regarding autism I should say. And um, I have cheated a bit because I couldn't remember them all off the top of my head because I do have a bad memory so I've got a list here in front of me. The first myth, people with autism don't want friends. We do. Because um, I love having the friends that I've got, both online and the ones that I can meet in person. Yes, I do consider those that I talk to online as true friends. Even though I've never met most of them. Um... Yes, I actually agree with that as well. It actually says here, this is actually aimed at kids in classrooms, but I think the same can be applied to adults as well. Because we struggle, or some of us can struggle with social skills, like myself, it can make, uh, make it difficult for us to interact with peers. Um... Because, especially for me, as I said in the other video, it can take my brain a while to process what's going on. And usually, by the time it has, my peers have moved on with the conversation, so it's too late for me to actually say anything anyway. <laughs> Which is one reason why I just sit quiet, because my brain is that bloody slow at doing that. Everyone's just moved on. Um... So yes, we do want friends, we just find it a bit difficult. Um, and I suppose it can worry us that we might do something, you know, they consider weird and that might push, you know, make them go, we don't want to be your friends anymore. There's lots of things that go through our heads. Probably a load of old crap, you know, that will never happen, but it still goes through our heads. Anyway, moving on to number two. People with autism can't feel or express any emotion, happy or sad. Truth. Autism doesn't make an individual unable to feel the emotions you feel. It just makes the person communicate emotions and perceive your expressions in a different way. Um... As far as expressions go, I think, for me, I find it most difficult, like probably many others, to perceive things in written form online, and I do get a lot of, um, or I do make a lot of mistakes, you know, and sort of put my foot in it, so to speak. <laughs> um, but yes, I do actually find it hard myself to communicate emotions. So, a lot of the time, you know, if I'm feeling sad, no one notices. If I'm feeling upset, no one notices. Because I just don't say anything. Um, and they probably don't notice because I probably have the same sort of expression I've got now, you know. Okay, number three. People with autism can't understand the emotions of others. Yes, we can. I'll read out what they've put here. Autism often affects an individual's ability to understand unspoken, interpersonal communication. So, someone with autism might not detect sadness based solely on one's body language. There's the key word there. Might not detect. Well, actually, that's three key words. Maths wasn't my strong point at school. <laughs> what? Um... By showing one's body language or sarcasm in one's tone of voice. But when emotions are communicated more directly, people with autism are much more likely to feel empathy and compassion for others. Uh, for me, personally, as 
sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. I think it depends on the person who's, you know, trying to put that body language across sort of thing. For my friends and family, yes, I can really easily. You know, I know when something's not right with them, I know. But perhaps if it was a stranger, someone I'm not familiar with, then I would struggle. Um, unless, like it said here, it's a bit more direct. Um, but yes, contrary to popular de de belief, popular belief rather, we do feel empathy and compassion. Um, and I actually find that if someone else is feeling sad, I will feel sad myself. If someone's happy, I feel happy. If they're angry, I feel angry. Um, so I do, I do personally class myself as an empath. Um, but this is why autism is such a scale, because it differs between all of us. What others would struggle with, other autistic people would struggle with, I might not. And vice versa, I might have difficulties with things that they don't. Um, number four. People with autism are intellectually disabled. Ooh, that is far from the truth and very insulting, actually, if anyone thinks that. Um, and they've written here, Oftentimes, autism brings with it just as many exceptional abilities as limitations. Many people with autism have normal to high IQs, and some may excel at math, music, or another pursuit. Mine would probably probably be Lego. Definitely not speech at the moment. <laughs> it would be Lego. Um, I failed English at school. But I do think if I went back and retook English... Well, I say failed, I got a D. I got probably the lowest mark before an actual fail. Um, but I do know nowadays, if I actually went back, I could improve that. To at the very least a C. Might get a B if I really, really pushed it and worked at it. Um, but it is very common for someone with autism to be extremely knowledgeable on their favourite subject, their favourite hobby. Um, I don't consider myself an expert at any of my interests. I consider myself having a good knowledge, but not an expert. Um, so, yeah. Just because we've got autism, it doesn't mean we're intellectually dumb. <laughs> we are just like any other human being on the planet. As I've said, or at least I think I've said, I've got a bad memory, which can actually be another autistic trait. I've totally lost a thread there. <laughs> See what I mean? We think differently, that's what I was going to say. I was going to swap hands. Number five. People with autism are just like Dustin Hoffman's character in Rain Man. Truth. Autism is a spectrum disorder, meaning its characteristics vary significantly from person to person. Knowing one person with autism means just that, knowing one person with autism. His or her capabilities and limitations are no indication of the capabilities and limitations of another person with autism. It's exactly that. It varies between us. Um, cause I know a guy, autistic genius, he runs a Facebook page by that name. And he can stand up in public and pretty much do what I'm doing, but in person to like a hundred odd people in front of him. I couldn't do that. I can do it to the camera and put it up on YouTube for lots and lots of people to watch, but I couldn't do this in person. I would have so much anxiety, I'd probably want to go and run and hide in another country or something. 
Anyway, <laughs> number six. People who display qualities that may be typical of a person with autism are just odd and will grow out of it. No. Autism stems from biological conditions that affect brain development and, for many individuals, it's a lifelong condition. You don't grow out of it. Um, it's there for life. With the right support, I mean, if it's caught in t um, when you're a child, it wasn't for me, unfortunately, but children with it, if they get the right support, when they become an adult, they will learn to deal with a lot of their limitations. Um, I actually find as an adult I can deal with a lot a lot more easier than I could as a child. Uh, number seven. People with autism will have autism forever. Um, truth. Recent research has shown that children with autism can make enough improvement after intensive early intervention to test out of autism diagnosis. This is more evidence for the importance of addressing autism when the first signs appear. Um, I disagree with that one simply because you don't grow out of it. Depending on how where you are on the spectrum, if you've only got it mildly then the chances are you can just learn to deal with any limitations it gives you far easier than someone who's, you know, deeper on the spectrum than them. Um, if you catch what I mean. I'm guessing that's what they're trying to say there. But they haven't done a very good job at that one. Uh, da -da -da -da. Number eight, autism is just a brain disorder. Research, research has shown that many people with autism also have gastrointestinal disorders, food sensitivities, and many allergies. Uh, that is actually true for me, I guess. I do have, not diagnosed officially, but I do have gastrointestinal problems. Um which could be a lactose intolerance, it could be IBS, but I do have issues there. Uh, I think I'd say maybe not food sensitivities, but I'm guessing with lactose would come under that one. Allergies? No, I don't have the allergies. Uh, <laughs> Aut number nine, autism is caused by bad parenting. No. Oh, really? In the 1950s, a theory called the refrigerator mother hypothesis, sis, rather, arose suggesting that autism was caused by mothers who lacked emotional warmth. This has long been disproved. Uh, da -da -da -da, we're nearly there. The prevalence of autism has been steadily increasing for the last 40 years. The truth. The rate of autism has increased by 600% in the last 20 years. In 1975, an estimated 1 in 1.5 thousand had autism. In 2014, an estimated 1 in 68 had an autism spectrum disorder. And I have actually thought of a couple that they haven't listed here, which I will mention. Therapies. This is actually probably more for America than it is here in Britain, this one. Therapies for people with autism are covered by insurance. Truth. Most insurance companies exclude autism from the coverage plan. Roughly half of the 50 states currently require coverage for treatments of autism spectrum disorders. Yeah, we don't have that here, so it don't apply here. Um, damn, I've totally forgotten the ones that I'd actually thought of. That was it. One of them is that um, 
vaccinations cause autism. No, it doesn't. That, and there is proof on the internet of this, was fabricated evidence from a doctor who has lost his license to practice medicine because of this, because he fabricated all the evidence. Um, I can't remember the doctor's name, but it was just a load of old baloney, basically, from this doctor that started it, and uh, people have just followed suit. Um, so now there's parents out there who won't vaccinate their children. That's entirely their choice. It's their child, you know, their life. I'm not going to say they should or they shouldn't. It's up to them. Um, but Mum had four kids. Right? I've got three siblings. I'm the only one out of all four of us who had vaccines that has autism. I had wondered if my um, younger, one of my younger brothers, my youngest brother out of the two, had it, but uh, if he does, it's only very, very mild. Um, so, I really personally, from personal experience, can't believe that myth. It is just that, it's a myth. Uh, but like I said, any parents watching this, it's entirely up to you, you know, like I said, it's your life, your child, but just keep in mind if you don't vaccinate them, you're putting other kids at risk as well, <clears throat> as well as your own child from getting whatever diseases, um, which actually can be far worse than autism. Anyway. I'm going to leave the video here, so I hope you liked this video and found it useful. The like button. I appreci I'll, I'll appreciate that very much. Something like that. I'm getting tired, I think. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer any. And I will um, speak to you all again soon. Bye.